joining us right now. One of my favorite people, and he's got the best dang hat in all of Texas, I think. Tarrant County Sheriff Bill Weyburn. Sheriff, it's an honor to have you as always. Glad to see that you are keeping healthy. Thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here. How how are you and 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 your deputies? How are you all staying healthy with this? Because you know you're, you're all a part of you know police. Your first responders. You're the first point of contact for serious situations. How do you how are you guys approaching, or what are you doing differently in this pandemic era to not just protect yourselves but the community? Well, the first thing we've done is if our deputies or people are are ill, is to stay home. Don't come to work. And the second thing that we're doing is, is that we provided uh, a few materials at the back doors of our jails and and in our different divisions that they can. If somebody's at the least bit feeling bad, we will check on them. And if if there's a hint of it, we're we will be sending them home. Fortunately, we haven't had to do that. You know, I law enforcement officers are famous for bad diets and poor exercise, but. But really, our immune systems is pretty good because of what we see and where we're at and where we've done things. So, so far, so good. But we're being very careful and keeping a close eye on it. I had to kind of chuckle at one of the headlines I had earlier because uh, Newport, Oregon, their uh, their police department hadn't been, I guess, as lucky as uh, as yours has. They've been dealing with people calling the emergency line seriously because they ran out of things like toilet paper. And they, the police, they, the Newport, Oregon police had to issue a statement saying, stop calling the emergency line just because you're out of toilet paper. That is not an emergency issue. Do you tend to find, I mean, and I realize Texas is different. Tarrant County is different. Do you tend to find that there, maybe it's anxiety that's fueling this, but do, do you deal with this w- with, within your department as well? Uh, we have is that we've seen people and and uh, we haven't personally been involved in any fights at the grocery store, but we do know that the shelves are cleared out and the toilet paper you can't find, which is a whole another realm of why. But uh, uh, people have panicked and and the anxieties are high. And of course, I would say to them, let's be calm. Mm-hmm. Every day is a new day, and this thing is fluid and it's going to be changing and continuous to change. But if we keep our eye on the prize, we'll, we will do just fine. Right. I would imagine that that you have received some of the guidelines that's been coming out from the administration and the CDC and and, and what to tell the community about uh, where it concerns anxiety or, or getting out together in groups. I saw video footage of police in New Orleans just on Saturday going through Bourbon Street, which was packed, telling the crowd to disperse. Your, this is not good for public health. Uh, what would you tell people? And, and I'm actually going to ask this for my own 18-year-old son, who has been very cool about all of this, because, you know, obviously you have a lot of college kids that are home. You have a lot of high schoolers that are out of school and everybody's confined in the house. What do you tell those that younger demographic who seem to be asymptomatic, and but it's the older folks that they might come in contact with that we're all trying to, you know, keep from having to go to the hospital? What would you tell the younger people out there about the social distancing and why it's important? Well, what I would tell them is that probably because they're young and healthy, they're going to survive this. But the, but we need them to serve others now. We need them to take care of their neighbor and to do these common sense things so that they won't be the person that's carrying that, that bug to a elderly person or somebody that's easily compromised. Is that those kids, it is their moment to shine and on mission to make sure that they're not the carrier of this evil bacteria. Yeah. And, and, and that's a good point as well, because it takes everybody kind of pitching in. I'm glad that the president said that there's not a, uh, a national federal mandate for a curfew or any kind of lockdown. Have you been seeing people have been pretty good, though, from, from where you are in Tarrant County? Have people been pretty compliant? Very compliant. And, you know, my heart breaks for our restauranters and, and uh, places of business that are just being devastated by this economy right now. But I see people being compliant. I'm sitting across from the courthouse right now in downtown Fort Worth, and and you know, with you could throw rocks and never hit anybody because yeah. people are staying home. They're staying away from the areas that people congregate. Yeah, and, th- and it might be good for the first week. How long do you? Well, I mean, I know it's kind of difficult to predict. The president said that you know it might be a couple of weeks, and then we turn the corner on this. But we still might be dealing with obviously cases of this going into July and August. And I kind of wonder, is it the good behavior of the first week because everyone's very concerned about it? And then after the first week settles in and people get cabin fever. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this. 
We really haven't. And, and what I, my advice to people is, is give us two weeks and then let's look in the rearview mirror and see where we're at and, and check on where we're going. Yeah. And if we can be disciplined enough to just hang tight right there and really think about this being a mission of being, you know, loving thy neighbor and loving thy neighbor by staying away from your neighbor and, uh, and doing the social distance things and doing the common sense things of washing your hand. If we can do all that, I think in two weeks, we're going to see a different, different country mm. and a different time. But I think mm. it's important that we all come together. This is our moment and we need to come together and defeat this, this mm. crisis. Last quick question for you, Sheriff. I've been seeing some lawmakers, Champaign, Illinois, the mayor there, uh, some other lawmakers, they would, when they would declare either a uh, state emergency or even just the mayor saying that we have an emergency here, that some of the ordinances that they have released included uh, prohibition on selling of firearms and ammunition and things like that. We were talking about the legality of something like that. How commonplace is that to your knowledge and experience for something that l kind of language to be included in some of these ordinances? And, and what are your thoughts on the legality of it? Well, I don't think it's legal, number one. And number two is the only place I'm hearing about it is in Illinois. And uh, I think it's an over overreach and a reaction where, hey, I can put this amendment on there to show people that, you know, I'm pro-gun control and we're going to keep guns out of these people's hands. And I, I just think this is the last moment where we are asking people to do things is to interfere with their civil liberties. Because, I mean, it's encroaching anyway, but we need to have some common sense, and I believe that's outside the realm. Oh, there you go. Well, we appreciate it, Sheriff Phil Weyburn. Prayers for your safety and health, as well as all the deputies there serving with you and all of our first responders. We so appreciate what y'all do and uh, hope that you stay safe and healthy and able to keep charging through and get it done. Thank you, Sheriff.